best of Larry Nixon, your guide to tips on better bass fishing with one of BASS leading money winners, Larry Nixon. Fishing crankbaits is one of Larry's most productive methods for catching bass off underwater structure. Today's lesson brings Larry to a small lake in north central Texas near the town of Glen Rose. Let's join Larry as he searches for largemouth bass. In today's lesson, crankbaits work. One thing that a fisherman needs to look for when he's fishing crankbaits is, is really it's determined by the type of water you're fishing in and the season of the year. Usually fall of the year, fish are more ledge or channel related. And that means staying that means staying farther out offshore. There's a good fish right there. Staying farther out offshore, big fish. And making long casts to get that bait down on them points. There's a really a good fish right there. Well, I'm gonna just ski you on in here then. Man, that's a nice bass right there. That's funny how you get their heads up. If you get their heads up, once they get it out and start skiing them, you can bring them on in. Now, if you want to, if you want to have a lot of fun with them, you let them go down and fight and pull. But a lot of times in tournament competition, I don't do it that way. I'm gonna get him on in. That is a really a good fish right there. I'm gonna put a tag in him. One of the little fin pile tags. He's one that I'd like to see again someday. Tag number 0811. All right, big boy, thank you. Get on back down there where you came from. Goodness, that was fun. He interrupted me. I don't mind interruptions like that, though. And that when water's clear, fairly clear like this water is right here, I mean, I pretty well know that unless the water temperature's cold, the fish are gonna be on offshore ledges. And that means staying out in deeper water and making long casts. And fish love crawfish. I don't know why, but in all my years of fishing with crankbaits, deep diving crankbaits, Predominantly, the colors that produce best day in and day out and everywhere I go are some sort of chartreuse or a crawfish pattern. Get that bait down there and feel him digging. You want to feel him hitting something. A lot of times this time of year, too, rather than fish being really schooled up tight, they'll be on a stretch where you just take your boat and come, you know, follow a ledge. Now, they school tight, don't get me wrong here, but sometimes when you're real lucky or fishing's good, maybe the fish is scattered out. I think I hit a stump or something. They can be just scattered down a brake line and you just fish the whole thing, just keep following it with the boat. Confidence is an important part of anything you do. If you don't feel like you're gonna do well or catch fish when you go out there, then you're probably gonna have a bad day. So keep it fun and go out there with a positive attitude and, and have a good time and usually your success will be much better. There he goes. He's a little, no, he ain't too bad. I thought that was a little old bitty fish. Yeah, I've seen a lot of times I liked him. Ain't mm, bad fish at all. Wanted your crawdad for dinner, huh? Yeah, I think they're feeding on crawfish.
Anytime I catch two or three bass like that right in a row off a given place, you know, before I move on and see if they're scattered all up and down that ledge, I'm going to turn around and go right back through that place. I mean, there was evidently there's a little bunch of fish right here. Because you don't catch two or three in, in a 50 yard stretch without there being more bass there. I mean, that's just the way it is. There's, there's plenty of fish right here. When fishing a ledge and you catch two or three fish in a short stretch of water, be sure to circle back through that area, fishing it thoroughly, maybe with a Carolina rig before moving on. Chances are you may find that area is holding more fish than the few you have just caught. See, that's a target right there that I did not hit with my plug, and I need got to remember where it was. Well, I, when I fish this again, I want to hit that right there. It's important that you hit it. If you don't hit it and ricochet off, a lot of times you won't trigger them into biting. I mean, it, it just has to hit that structure. These two big old stumps right there. Right in the line with... Right in line with that tree right there is where they are. Rod down when you're fighting them. You don't want them jumping off. Oh, and I barely got this one. I'm going to have to really play him gently. I mean, right in the corner of the lip. Ah, he's got one hook there pretty good. One hook right in the corner of the jaw. That's a nice fish. He wanted that. He wanted that crawdad. Boy, that is a fine crawdad crankbait right there. 7A. That's one of my favorite tournament lures. One of them autograph series colors. I see, I can feel that right there. I, that, that is a... Uh, I could feel the drag on that line as it was coming up a stump or a treetop or something down under the water. You want to try to determine every little thing that you feel when you're bass fishing. I mean, it takes a little time. It's just like going to school. You've got to fish. You've got to make a lot of casts. You've got to hit different objects. But once you learn the feel of different objects, then you know when to jerk at a limb, and I mean, you know when you're making that little boo-boo of jerking at a limb, which I do occasionally. I jerk at limbs. We all jerk at limbs. I ain't jerking every now and then. I'm not having any fun. But still, you're better off when you're feeling a structure like that not to swing at it. Just make it ricochet off and stop, and bam, they'll bite. Feel is important in bass fishing. Learning how it feels to run a variety of baits through a variety of conditions helps you to learn what lies under the water. This is an important key to becoming a better bass fisherman. Occasionally, once I go around an area, you know, I've got a point back there, and this is back in here is kind of a, what I call a bay. It's a little shallower, and I don't want that lure to run so deep. That's when I'd reach and pick up that little small crankbait, the little 5A. Boy, that's a fish-catching little dude sometimes. Well, that gun, the very first cast, one just drilled him. Feels like a good fish, too. He's either a big one or I've got him snagged. I don't know which. And I mean, I have got some teeny, teeny little hooks on this bait. Yeah, he's not as big as I thought he was, but he's a good one anyway. He's a, he is a good one. I mean, I have barely got that dude. Ah, I've got him better than I thought I did. That is a good fish. I ain't believing that. See, that's one of them things where you just make the right move at the right time. My 7A was digging in the moss and there's a little shallow, scuzzy grass growing along these things, and the fall of the year, a lot of times these fish are back in these pockets, and 
you wouldn't want that big diver. Another little bait that I do awful well on is a little 2A. He's got a short lip and he'll only run about two foot deep. When they get real shallow, that's the one I switch to. That's a nice one. That was a nice one. Well, see, that's what happens when you don't hook your reel on your, on your rod. This Nixon Note is brought to you by Abu Garcia, legendary rods and reels. Abu Garcia for life. A very important part of my equipment on my bass boat is a GPS. Now, I have to admit, a lot of lakes, a GPS is not necessary. But if you fish any lake that's maybe five miles across, or maybe you fish uh, two or three hundred yards out in the middle of the lake, boy, a GPS can really come in handy because you hit a spot out there and bang, 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 you catch three or four fish and you want to go right back to it, a GPS will get you there. And it's really the only accurate way and, and non-confusing tool there is to get you back on a spot. And you get on a big lake like Lake St. Clair here, I'm going to tell you right now, it'll save you a lot of gas. And not only that, a big fog move in on you, it'll get you home. This Nixon note is brought to you by Ballistic, stainless steel products. One problem that we all have in bass fishing is getting crankbaits to run right. It can be such minor little things as the O-ring too big for the hook hanger or the O-ring too big for the eye. So when you have one that won't run, inspect it very carefully and be sure every hook is free of paint. Uh, there's lots of little things that can happen right there and the bait won't run. The O-ring might even be hooked on the outside of the eye. But inspect it, it don't take but a second. And uh, not only that, but you know, the main one is the, the eye being bent in one direction or the other. If you make a cast and that lure runs to the left, then you take your pliers, catch the eye, and very easily, because it don't take but just a teeny little bit now to make it run true, bend the eye over just a hair and continue to make them adjustments until you've got it running straight. He got off, but he didn't. I still got him. Barely. Come here to me, young man. Whew. That's a nice one. Definitely made the right move when I picked up this smaller crankbait because this water is shallower. I mean about two turns and he was on it. Now, that's a good bass too. I mean a really good bass. Not a big one, but a good one. Would you come here to me? Playing gently. Ah, got him good. He got a hold of it good. Look at here, this fish has had an accident somewhere in life and broke a gill plate, and Mother Nature healed her right up. You know, actually being in the boat with somebody and watching them how to do things, that's why I think guides are such an important part of fishing. Like my brother Donnie Nixon down on Toledo Bend. You know, he, he fishes every day on Toledo Bend and takes people out and actually teaches them how to fish certain lures. And not only that, but when they catch fish, he teaches them why fish are in that given area. I'm a firm believer that, you know, to fish a lure properly and to land a majority of your fish, you need to match your rod up to the type of fishing that you're doing. 
And when I'm fishing crankbaits, I always like to throw it on fiberglass because it's so soft and forgiving. And I mean, when you hook a fish, it don't help, it don't help pull that bait out of his mouth. And you got them little bitty trebles and a wiggling crankbait. A lot of times they don't get zeroed in on that thing real good. And boy, I mean, you'll just have them with one little hook right in the lip. And that glass, it, it sure helps you to land that fish. And not only that, but when you, when you load a glass rod up on the cast, I mean, it'll fire that bait out there. Match the tackle you're using to the type of fishing you're doing. Try using a fiberglass rod when throwing crankbaits. The fiberglass rod tends to be softer and more forgiving and doesn't pull the crankbait away from a fish as a heavier rod might. George, I got that dude. That's a good fish, too. I mean, a really good fish. That is a dandy. Hang on there, you little hooks, you. Now, this is when a guy's proud to have a little limber fishing pole. And I believe I've got this one whooped. Ah, thank you. Look at that, ain't that a good one? Just barely had him. I'm glad I thought of switching to that littler bait because I, I was catching fish on the big bait and I caught a big fish on it, but I was just staying in the junk and there wasn't as many fish out on the ledge as there is up there in that, in that little bit shallower water. That's a beautiful fish right there now. Well, I sure hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Fishing crankbaits is one of my favorite things to do, and at certain times of the year, it's the very best thing you can throw. Remember to match your lure to the type of water you're fishing. The 7A in the deeper water, water five to seven foot deep. When you go shallow, throw the smaller bait because it's not gonna run as deep. Now, a lot of times when fish are in the backs of the bays, they're feeding on shad. That's why you use a shad pattern. When they're on the ledges, the crawfish color, or the, or the chartreuse, is gonna be your better producer. Come back and see me again next week.